Je viens dans sa présence pour contempler son Saint Nom, pour adorer sa majesté. I come into his presence to contemplate his holy name and to adore his majesty. When you are born again, when you discover the love of Christ, the love of, love of Christ plant in your heart the desire to do His will. That's, that's, that is what is born again. Because the Bible says that you are born of spirit. So the spirit of the Lord plants in your heart the desire to do His will. Because that desire that he plants in you is based upon his own desire for you. So as a child of the Lord, we come into his presence to contemplate the majesty of his glory the beauty of his name. By the grace of God, last Sunday we saw how the Spirit of the Lord granted unto a man the desire of his heart because he came to worship. So as I come into his presence, I come to acknowledge him to worship his majesty to elevate his holy name and to say lord do unto me as you please somebody say lord do unto me as you please do unto me as you please oh god somebody say lord jesus do lord unto jesus. me as you please do unto me as you please You see, if you trust God and you trust that he's able to know all and anything, the same God is able to know the good plans that he has for you. For he said, I know the plans that I think towards you. He said, these are not plans of death but plans of life. These are not plans of destruction, but plans to build you up. Oh, he says, therefore I know the plans that I think towards you. Plans to give you a future. Say, Lord, establish my future today. Establish Lord, my establish my future today. Lord Jesus, establish my future today. This is the promise he has made. For he said, I know the plans that I think towards you. Meaning plans that you could not even imagine. Plans that you could not even pray for. Plans that you could not even ask for. And that before you were asking for anything, he knew the plans that he has conceived in himself. Plans for future. Just look at your life. Look from where you were and from where God is taking you. And look at your current state and you see that there is a shift of God taking you out of the troubled waters to get you into the still waters. Hallelujah. For he said, be still and know. Hallelujah. Be still and know. 
that I am God. What it means by this is that just watch me do and be amazed. Be still and know that I am God. Be still, watch me do and be amazed. The Spirit of God is the one changing our heart. The Spirit of God is the one circumcising our heart. The Spirit of God is the one giving us to cry out, Habba, Father. So as we come in the presence of the Lord Jesus, we have no order to worship, no order to call on, but to the true living God, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the King of Shalom. He is our high priest. He is our melted Siddiq. He is our provider for Jehovah Jai Ray. He is our banner. He is the Lord of hosts who combat, who fight and war on our behalf. He is the one who commands the sea to be still and the sea remains still. He's the one who speaketh into the void of your life and create life in that void. He's the one who gives you peace in order to remain in peace. For I speak it, so I am. So I am, thus I speak it. So when God speaketh in your heart, in your spirit and you hear the word of the Lord speaking through you you can also therefore says thus saith the Lord and thus saith God on my behalf and you become as God has said this is the reason why he says I know the plans that I think towards you Lord Jesus, we bless you. We honor you for God, for all that you have done. We honor you for the grace. We honor you for the mercy. We honor you for the chastisement. We honor you for the corrections. We honor you, Lord God, for all that you do. And we're asking you, Lord, to take over. And to do as you please. Let us be put aside and increase dimensionally. Lord God, let your word increase. Let it be established in our spirit, in our soul, in our mind, in our heart that the fingers and the members of our body will fulfill that good word in our lives now and forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome in the house of the Lord. Somebody whose name is David, he said, I was glad when they told me, let us go in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, hey, let me tell you something. Today is Sunday, right? But listen, if Christ Jesus decides to come, are you ready to go? Ha-ha. <laughs> Hallelujah. Today is Sunday. The Bible says that he has set for himself an hour in which he will come. And when he comes, he will come like a what? Like a thief in the night. Meaning you won't even imagine it. You won't even, like, how do I call it? Expect it. Because the Bible says that if the Servants knew which hour he will come. 
They will be looking for the master. But why? Because they will be putting their house in order, thinking that, they, okay, we have made all the mess for all time. But since he's coming at 11.35, around 11.30, let us clean up. Let us clean up. Let us clean up. No, no, no. You say, I'm going to come. You don't even know. In another word, you need to keep your house clean. At all time. Because let me tell you something. If he does not come to take you out, he will come to establish you. Are you following what I'm saying? So if he comes to establish you, and then you are not ready, you are not clean up, you are not all positioned, uh, uh, you, must, you, you might wait 40 years after. I don't want to wait 40 years after. Are you what I'm saying? Because what God has intended to do in my life now, say now. Say now. now. Say now. now. Uh -huh. now. What he intended to do in my life now, I don't want to postpone it. Do you? I don't want to postpone. Do you want to postpone what God wants to do in your life? But how do you get it right now? Hallelujah. If your house is not clean and your house is filled and full of all other stuff that are not worthy, when it comes to fill you, he sees that you are, you are not empty. You see what I'm saying? You're already filled of all kind of stuff that is not even... You know, when you are filled with the Spirit of God, because the Spirit of God is not a... Uh, a, a no, no, it's not a matter. Uh, it's not a tangible matter. When you are filled with the Spirit of God, you can still fly. You see what I'm saying? But if you are filled with the world, you ain't going to fly. You will be heavy. Hallelujah. When you want to rise in the spirit, you will see it like a... <laughs> Hallelujah. It will be like rocks that will hit you because you can't fly. You, you can't rise. So Christ says, I will come. So when he comes, there are two things. The Bible has spoken of him coming on two of occasions. One, to take you out, and one, to establish you. When he came for those who had the three, the, 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 the three men who were given the talent, hallelujah, he came to do what? To establish them, to increase them. So if he didn't take you out, he's to increase you. But if it comes that you are not ready to be increased, what's going to happen? You're going to wait for the next season. It's every 40 years. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. Uh, am I the one saying it? No. You just have to study the word of God. Hallelujah. 400 years after he came to say, okay, I'm going to establish these people. Who? The Israelites. Where? In Egypt. Amen. 400 years after. Amen. When he came, they were still in all trouble. They have family problem, business problem, money problem, slavery problem. They have all kind of problem. God came anyway. He said, okay, I have come. Not because you have necessarily called me. I have come because I'm faithful. Are you know what I'm saying? Because there was somebody who prayed for you. When you were still lost. Hallelujah. Somebody prayed for you while you were still lost. So God honors the word of somebody and says, okay, I'm going to visit his case. Say, Lord, visit my case. Lord, visit my case. I'm going to visit his case. But when I come, I want the person to tell me why I should grant him his case. Now, when it comes, you, you don't have many talk to say. All you got to say is, Lord, your blood. That's all. Because it is the blood of the Lamb that has what? Redeemed us from the power of this world of the devil and in sin. Amen. So all I can claim is the blood. For the word of God says, I defeated the devil through what? The word of my testimony and the blood of the lamb. But 
if you don't have the blood, which means if you are not born again through the spirit of God, by the grace of Christ, through faith, then that blood cannot be yours. You will have blood of good. <laughs> Amen. And blood of good and saving. Amen. It will just make you stain. That's all. <laughs> So today, whatever God said it is for me today, I say always, I ain't going to wait for tomorrow. Why? Because he already made a decree. Today thou shalt go out. When he talked to the Israelites, he said, today at midnight, thou shalt go out. You've been waiting for a long time. You, 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 you've been waiting for a long time. Lord, when are you? When are you? Lord, hey, visit me. Lord, help me. Lord, mercy. Lord, grace. He was looking at you like this. And then he said, okay, I'm going to come, but I'm going to come on my own time. Now, when he comes, he said, I'm going to establish you, increase you, and send you out. Now the question is, are you as much as ready? Are you know what I'm saying? Because you got to find somewhere in your heart, in your spirit, in your soul, room for Christ to abide. He said, I come and I knock at your door. Amen. If you open, hallelujah. He said, if why? Because he's not, he's not, he's not certain you're going to open. <laughs> so he said, if. Conditions in the quantum. But if you open, there will also be a result. And the result is that he's going to do what? Hallelujah. And I always say this. I say when Christ tells you that if you open your door, he goes in, in reality is that he will take you in. Hallelujah. All you got to do is to let him get in your house. When he gets, when you let him get in your house, he will carry all your luggage and you yourself, and he will go in his mansion. <laughs> Amen. Then you find yourself in his house. For if you abide in me, I will abide in you. So today, we're going to continue on what God has spoken of, which is D. Solman, un mot. Say D. Solman, un mot. <laughs> which means, say a word. Just say a word. Just say a word. Now, today, I don't know which word you need Christ to say. Amen. I don't know which word, but I do know whatever word that Christ will say today in your life will take form in the today. I'm, let me explain you this. When a judge rules over a case, he has the book of the law, right? In that book of the law, there are many writings, right? But not all of them apply to the case he's ruling over. Am I right? So when he's presented with a case on his docket, he takes the case and search the law. And the law that applied to the case at that time, he rule over it with it and the case is decided. Am I right? That law maybe have written years ago, hundreds of years ago, but when he applied that law in the time where he's sitting instantly, the case is decided. So the word of God is the law of the spirit. It's the feed that we have to decide the case of our lives, either in the now, in the future, or from the past. So today we're going to look what the word of God tells us for today. I'll give you, I want you to give me the message. This Solomon MO, we're go, going to go in the book of Matthew. And we're going to read chapter 8 to build up from where we were last time. Now, I, let, me, let, let me tell you something. Yesterday, I was really tired. I was extremely tired. I, I, I slept like around, I think, 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. But you see, I'm still standing, preaching. So if you sleep, 
you will miss it. Do you follow what I'm saying? Tell your eyes, be delivered. Uh, hallelujah. Tell to your eyes, be set free. Amen. Okay. <laughs> if I find you asleep, I will call you, you cannot preach. That will wake you up. <laughs> hallelujah. So let's take the book of Matthew chapter 8. <laughs> Matthew chapter 8. Chapter let's read from Matthew verse 1. Eight. Yes, please. Thank you. Mm -hmm. When he was come down from the mountain. When he was come down from the mountain. Great multitude followed him. Great multitude followed him. And behold, there came a leper and washed him. Hallelujah. Amen. God is building upon what he said last time. Listen, there was a great multitude that was following Christ. Amen. And all that multitude, there was only one man Christ focused on. Are you that one man? Hallelujah. There was a great multitude. In that multitude, you have everything. You have the Democrat. You have the Republicans. You have the conservative, you have the liar, you have the good, you have the wrong, you have everything. You have the Muslim, you have the Jew that is, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> the Jew, thank you. <laughs> Amen. You, huh? Okay. <laughs> My word goes in the indication, like, thank you. <laughs> I forgot this one. <laughs> Amen. You have all. The Bible talks about a what? Give me one, verse one. When he was come down from the mountain, uh -huh. great multitude followed. No, 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 no. You don't pronounce that right. Great what? Multitude. No, multitudes. Multitudes. Is that what I'm saying? This is important. It means that on the left, you have thousands. On the right, you have thousands. On the back, you have thousands. On the front, you have thousands. And in the midst of thousands, great multitudes. There was one. That was detected. Say, Lord, locate me today. Lord, locate me today. Let me tell you something that you don't understand. That man was sitting there as usual. It's like you today, you are coming to Sunday as usual. Are you know what I'm saying? For him, it was a day as usual. Until that day was shifted and the law was applied to his case. If you miss it, I will take it for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because I'm a collector of blessing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have you ever heard of debt collector? I'm blessing collector. You don't take it, I take it. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was not. Listen, Lord, the Lord spoke to us last time. He said, He called us to be what? Wealth. And did, did that word penetrate your soul yet? Like you are wealth manufacturer. Huh? You say, Well, he's getting there. No, yeah, he ain't getting there. Uh, Grace, Grace, we're going to be rich. Hallelujah. We ain't going to be rich. We, we were praying that we were going to be rich, but we are now rich. Hallelujah. We were praying that we we're going to be there, but I'm now there. Why? Because the Lord Jesus is the one who has borrowed all my iniquities. He's the one. He's not me. What he wanted and required of me is that I trust, believe in him, and I change my life. Ah, with his life. A switch. He's like a, 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 an exchange. Currency exchange. Your currency, if you take your friend CFA and you come to the United States, go to the store, take it, by it, you will see. If they don't call the police on you, they will shoot you out. <laughs> because they will take fake money. Are you know what I'm saying? It has no value for them at all. But if you take 
Dollar. You go in Cameroon, you can buy it. Because over there, there's no dollar. <laughs> I, I, am, am I right? It's the same with your life as a currency. If you want to buy in the spirit, you need to use a currency that is known in the spirit, which is the blood of Christ, the word of Christ. And that currency of the spirit is also known on the earth. So you can use it both above and below. For it says, if, oh, it says, I will give you the power to lose whatever that is to be on earth and it will be losing. Once I give you the currency of my word, you can apply it on earth, you can apply it in heaven. There was a great move to shoots and Christ located one man please continue verse 2 and behold there came a leper and worshipped him saying Lord if thou wilt thou canst make me clean hallelujah Amen. the leper remember the leper was not honored or honorable or permitted to be among the camp. You see, he didn't have anything to worship Christ with. In the sense of financial. I remember last time, we explained on an aisle. I, he did not have any offering to give. But he came to, with his true self. And the great multitude was around. But he said, all I got to do is to be real to Christ. That's all I have to do. Is to truly say, Lord, I honor you. Lord, I worship you. And to let Christ see you among the multitudes. But now, when he sees you, he just don't just see you for nothing. He speak a word in your life. And when he speak a word, not many words, he speak a word in your life and that word take from when? Read for me, please. And the Bible, I said the Bible. Oh yeah, and the Bible says what? Verse 2 and? Verse 2, and behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Verse 3, and Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will, be thou clean. I will. Amen. He has a case before him. And he had to apply the rule of the law. The rule of the law was this. If a man is leprous, he must not be within the camp. He must be without to the camp outside. Until he has been clean from his leprosy, he cannot come back. Hallelujah. But here he is inside, somewhere around. I believe he had to be at the entrance of Capernaum. So he's looking for Jesus Christ to do something in his life. So he can also participate in the kingdom. You see, when Christ sets you, when Christ gives you, remember, it is to participate and build the kingdom of Christ. So, the man is sitting. He said, Lord, if thou will, thou can make me clean. Christ will anoint him, consecrate him, and say what? I will. So, he passes on him one law. And that one law is the law of mercy. Because according to the law of Leviticus, that man cannot be even around. But Christ we apply the heavenly law, which is the law of mercy. He gives you mercy to be established. He gives you mercy to be established. Say, Lord, give me mercy to be established. Give me mercy to be established. 
You see, in the multitude of other things, you may believe, you may think that some people have already done this, 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 this. So if you start, what will you do? No. In the multitude of everything that people do, Christ can still establish you. Doesn't matter on how long they started before you. Because when you are in your time zone, hallelujah, when you are in your time zone, you are never late nor either forward. You see, those people who are in China right now, they're sleeping. What time is it? It's three. They have 12 hours difference. I even what I'm saying. So while it is 3 p.m. over here, it is 3 a.m. out there. They are not late. They are not forward. They are in the time zone. I am not late. I'm not forward. I am just in my time zone. When my time zone hit 3 a.m., I found myself on the bed. Are you know what I'm saying? So in the time zone you at, you function in the day because it is your time zone. So when your time has arrived, regardless of whatever time of other people have been in the world, your time zone, when it arrives, God says, I will be thou established. Does it make sense? And which word it says? One word to establish you. Because once Christ introduced you to be recognized, see, listen, listen. Christ Jesus established him and introduced him to greatness and tells him, go show yourself to who? The priest. You see, let me tell you something. Last time we were talking about an influencer, remember? With uh, the word of God and our Bible study. And then we explain on how Samuel the prophet was there prior King Saul was uh, chosen. And we explain how Samuel has been there and has been judged for a long time. And he has had the possibility to know the people because when you read the word of God, you see how even Samuel, I say Samuel, Saul was looking for the seer. For what? For finding where is the lost donkey. So they have the knowledge of his reputation. Hallelujah. So the Bible says at that time now, Saul will be called in and then Samuel will take him and put him at the table of honor. And he introduced him at Mizpah to the people and the people say, yes, we're going to take him. What it means? When somebody who has influence introduces you somewhere, even if nobody, nobody knows you, you're going to be established. Does it make sense? You don't have to go to toil like everybody because you see, King Saul, he didn't toil, no nothing. All he did, he presented himself. Oh, somebody doesn't understand this one. You see, that toil to make the path so that when you arrive, you establish Jesus. Why? Because it is Christ who introduced you. The Bible says he has done the work. And the work that he has done, he has finished it. And when he finished it, he said, come and die. Are you know what I'm saying? So all you got to do at this time is to accept the call, accept the election, and let the anointing flow in you. And you will now do the good work. What is good work? What is good work? When the Bible says, say the good, you, when the word of God says, good, do the good work, it means that it is easy. For he said, my yoke is, are you following me saying? My burden is light. So what Christ established you to do, we flow in the spirit of the Lord because he's the one exchanging your burden with his. He's the one exchanging your life with his and he's establishing you to be recognized. One word. Dis seulement un mot. See, some of you in your life, you haven't seen 
$100. I what I'm saying. There was a time when you get up in the morning. First of all, you didn't even have wallet. <laughs> because you were so broke that uh, your pen was uh, like a, it was a, there was a, a hole inside. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. But then you wake up in the morning. You look at a shoe. In the bottom of your shoe over here, the shoe like this. Because you walk so much that the shoe is rattled. <laughs> Hallelujah. So in the morning, you wake up and you're thinking, ah, oh, I will do this, I will do that, I will do this. You're thinking. And suddenly, suddenly, God gives you a door. And from somebody who could not have $100 in his pocket, suddenly you have $1,000. And you're thinking, yesterday, even to buy your own fare, if you go to church and you have to buy your fare, you have to ask for somebody a ride. Because you cannot buy your own fare. Like to take the bus, you cannot. And suddenly now God is giving you rooms and ways and avenue. So what I'm saying is that look at your life then. Look at your life where he's taking you. And look at your current situation. And see that Lord is shifting things. In reverse, you may also have many things in the past. But you use it for your own, not for the glory of God. And then you went broke. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then what he does, he comes again because he's full of mercy. He takes you among the great multitudes. He cleans you up. He says, get back up and walk again. And all it takes is one word. What is the word that Christ has to speak in your life today? What is the word? That you're expecting from him to speak in your life today. You see, let me explain to you. That leprous, he had many problems. And he has many emotional dysfunctions. Because he has been shown from the community. He has been shamed. He has been ridiculed. He has been marginalized. Are you what I'm saying? But when he saw Christ, he didn't start with all his problems. Are you following what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to just go straight to the point. What do you need? He didn't come, oh Lord Jesus, you see, I've been here for 35 years. And when I was born, my mom really did not like me. But by the time my mom put me there, and then finally I was attached and then touched somebody who threw somebody who has the leprosy. And now I got the leprosy and I went to the, the priest and the priest, he said he could not heal me. And then they told me to get out of my house. And then there was a, a neighbor that I don't even like. He's the one who took my house. And at the end of the day, they shoot me out. And when they put me out, I was here. I could not even have food to eat. The last Last time I ate, it was cricket. By the time he finished to explain all his problem, Jesus, Jesus is gone. <laughs> because the Bible said Jesus was passing by. Amen. He was passing by. Amen. When the time is given to you as a door, just say one word. What I, you see? I asked somebody one time. I said, what's the best thing you like? The person said, I have many best. I said, but is there one among the best? When Christ asks you, what do you want me to do for you? Hallelujah. There will be one thing that will unlock everything else. If you want to be rich, do you think that Christ will be offended because you say, Lord, I want to be rich? Let me explain again. If you say, Lord, I want financial freedom. Do you believe we say, oh, 
are you asking for yourself? <laughs> no, you won't, you won't be offended. However, if you desire financial freedom and then you fake it by saying, oh Lord, I want to be loving you only, he knows you lie. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because you are deceiving yourself. Does it make sense? He knows what you want. Instead of asking him what is inside your heart, you play with the word of God. Saying, oh Lord, all I need is you. Now you broke, but you have only him, and then you complain. <laughs> uh, you, you get my point? So Christ is asking you today, what word do you want me to say in your life? Some of you, it might be a wife. Some of you, it might be a child. Some of you, it might be a breakthrough. Some of you, it might be healing. Because what you don't understand is that Christ is not bankrupt of many blessings. So you have the impression that if you don't say all the things you want and accumulate it and then finish not to talk, you believe that he, no, because he can still ask you another time at the right time. But now, what do you need? What is the word that you need that Christ says today in your life? You see, some of you, you have to think about it. <laughs> but you see, that lepros, he knew what he needed. Hallelujah. He knew exactly what he needed. Let's continue, please. Give me verse 3. Verse 3, and Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said unto him, See thou tell no man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. And, and Jesus and when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the words only and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth, and to another, come, and he cometh, and, my, and to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Verse 11, yes. and I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Stay right here. Give me that verse. Verse 11. And I say unto you mm -hmm. that many shall come from the east and west mm -hmm. and shall sit down with Abraham mm -hmm. and Isaac and Jacob mm -hmm. in the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. I want you to see this word. This verse. This is what I want you to see inside of it. I said earlier that when a law is written, that law, are, like there is a book of law and there are many different law inside. And when there is a case, the case is decided based on a specific law that applied to that case at that time. Hallelujah. But when they were, writ when they were writing that law, they were not writing that law for that specific case. Does it make sense? But since that case and that law and corroborate together, they can apply that law to that case. Does it make sense? So even though this word of God is clearly written for a specific reason, that portion of her, um, 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 uh, 8 and 11, I want you to see inside the application for your life today. And I will take four elements. Them, uh, um, 
And I said to you that many shall come from the east and the west. Hallelujah. As for me, I come from the west. Where are you coming from? <laughs> Hallelujah. From the side of the world, okay, from which you came from, I want you to understand this one, four principles, four elements. The first one is that for you to be established, God will have to move you from one place to another. Are you what I'm saying? Let me repeat again. For you to be established, God will have to move you from one place, from, to, uh, from one place to another. First element. If you find yourself in that first element, which is you were moved from one place to another, then you will understand where I'm going. Second element. The Bible says you will sit down with Abraham. What does it mean, Abraham, in this case here? It means what? Remember, I always tell you, you have to get in and deep in the spirit. What it means, Abraham, here, in this case? Faith and what? Did Abraham had only faith? Huh? He has riches. What type? Is that spiritual? Yeah. What type of riches did he have? He, he had actual riches. You see what I'm saying? He had actual physical riches. Amen? So he had faith in Melchizedek, Melchizedek which is what? The king of peace. Amen? He has faith in Christ. And because Christ said, Abraham saw my day and he rejoiced. Did he say that? Did he say that? Okay. So anyway, Abraham here stands for you as faith and riches. God said, the first element, he has to move you from one place to another. And you will be finding yourself in the land of riches. Do you, do you get it? Third element of the applicable law of God. You will also enter through J uh, uh, Isaac. What means Isaac over here? Huh? The promise. Hallelujah. So for you to be established, first God has to move you from one place, from the east, from the west, to get you in the land of Abraham. Meaning in the land of promise. Uh, sorry, of riches. And then, he's going to now give you a promise. Hallelujah. He's going to speak which promise? The promise of the word. For he made himself, what? Poor. So we be. For he took upon him all our chastisement and all the curses. You see, when you were there, because of curse, you cannot even eat gari. <laughs> Let, let me tell you something. To eat Gary, you know Gary? You know what that is? Okay. I poisson, a loco, Gary, miendo, ndole. To eat some of them, you, you, you have to have something. You cannot go by faith, present yourself to the lady, say, I want Gary. You won't work. Then, you come to a place where you have some things, but you didn't have even a car to drive. So to get from one place to another, it feels like a Jesus has to come to just take you. You were in places where, when you needed to, just have information about what step you have to do for business. You got to go to the actual office. And when you go there, if they don't know you, they won't receive you. If you don't also pay your way through, you won't also work. So you were in a place that was some kind of difficult. And God take you from one state to another state. I hear what I'm saying. First element. 
Second element, it tells you in that state, he pulls in that state riches. Because remember, the earth belongs to who? The fingers of men may have dug into the ground, but they did not plan to go there. Hallelujah. So what did God do? He let people just do the work. <laughs> and then he bring you in the result. I don't know if you see it. All you have to do is to be in your time zone. For God to see you in noonday. Take you from one place to another. So second element, third element. The fourth element is Jacob. What does it mean Jacob? Deceiver. Treacherous. Liar. Huh? Uh-huh, carnalist. Now what does it mean that first, that, that, uh, that uh, fourth element. It means after God took you from one place to another. He brought you into the land of riches. And then he gives you a promise. You might find yourself try to make your own way and fall into the, 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 the how we call it? The crook ways and of, this, of this land. You can find yourself being squeezed in this land. <laughs> you can find yourself go through a... Immigration. <laughs> so you're being now eaten up by the liar. You're being eaten up by the deceiver. But listen. Now it tells you a closure element. That speak on how you will be established. Because once you're established, you are free from the slavery. Hallelujah. Even though there may be weight, like Babylon. Daniel was in Babylon, but he was not a Babylonian. You know what I'm saying? So you may be in here with all the Jacob you have around. It does not mean you belong to the Jacobs. You know what I'm saying? But how do you know you don't belong to the Jacobs? I say, listen, remember, I say I take the word of God literally as the power to empower us in our daily life. Because it is made for it. So to rule over the case, he says, after all this, you will be find yourself in the kingdom of heaven. Where are you at right now? <laughs> Some, somebody don't see this one. You don't get it. Because for you to receive the word of the rule, you need to be in a certain room of the ruler. For you to receive redress for your case, your case needs to arrive in a room. I hear something. And in that specific room, you see, that case... You, sometimes when you write a case to the court, you don't know which judge will preside over it. I what I'm saying. Even if you want this judge to preside over it, it could happen that he does not have jurisdiction over your case. But the one who has jurisdiction over your case will decide your case based on the fact of the law. The, the, the law. I don't, know, I don't know if I'm too fast for you, but I pray that this one, you don't miss it. That you don't miss it. First element for you to be established, you got to get out of from one place. God has to take you from one place to another. It is in that place that you will hear his decree. Amen. For you to hear his decree in that place, you must make sure that uh, in that area, you are in a place where riches are. Okay? And God will speak in your life a promise, a word. And it will separate you so that you become not a Jacob. But it will do in a room called Kingdom of Heaven. How 
many of you have seen the hand of God in your life simply because you were at the right time, at the right place, at the right moment? You didn't pray for it. You didn't call for it. You didn't fight for it. You just found yourself there. You know, there was a guy in California, if I believe, California or something. He was jogging. I think a guy or a lady, whatever. Jogging. And suddenly, money started falling from heaven. And then, like, I'm talking about real, real stuff, not, not fiction. And then, they start picking up the money. Picking up the money. And in that area, the person was jogging. I think it was men or women, whatever. The person was jogging. It was not an area busy like uh, Silver Spring. It was a, a less busy like Hagerstown. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So there was not too many people to fight over that money. You know what happened? There was a plane going through that had a box of the cash that broke off the window. Uh, I said the window, the, the door. And that cash from the high was now falling. And that person was just making jogging. And found himself in that place where the cash was falling. <laughs> <laughs> You got a point. Let me let me give you an example. They they talk about the, uh, the, uh, the, the here's a better example. If you were in Cameroon today, in a time of COVID, you would have received only a mask. That's all. And then you will have received nothing. When you find yourself in the United States, what did you receive? I don't know if you start, start getting the point. Because what you don't understand is God who changed circumstances. And when he changed circumstances, he uses the people that he wants. He changes the king's heart in his hand, however he wills. See, she left Lumberton. And then she came from Lumberton. All the way to the kingdom of heaven. And this lady, after 20, 25 years of having a debt of student loan, God spoke a word on Sunday on how he will shift the thing and he will suddenly, it was Sunday, the Monday morning at what? 10 or whatever, an email came through that all the 65,000 of debt were free. Cancel. <laughs> it was Sunday. God spoke that word. She took it. She didn't, she didn't simply sit down to me spectacular. No, she took it. Monday morning, 10 a.m., letter, cancel. She even thought it was a scam. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? God bless you so, so surprisingly that you think this one comes from India. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He had the Nigerian who sent you that letter. Hallelujah. God decided to just touch the heart of a madman. And that madman just signed your paper. <laughs> he didn't even know what he was doing. Doesn't matter. All it matters is that you are free from your debts. Oh. Hallelujah. <laughs> there was a man who came from Cameroon. From, 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 where, where, where were you from? Hey, where you came from? Mutengene. Baba Bamenda. Now, let me explain to you. He came from Bamenda. You see, when you don't recognize the place of your blessing, blessing can miss you. Because the place of your blessing may be through, it's like a, 
King Saul, who was established through Samuel. But it was not Samuel who chose King Saul. Does it make sense? So even God is the one blessing you, he will choose one man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even God wants to bless you, he will use one man. Hallelujah. So wait, wait until 10 a.m. tomorrow. <laughs> Hallelujah. So what God does, God will use one man. He connects me through somebody else, through Facebook. And the brother come from Bamenda. Is that what? Bamenda. And then he had no idea how he will do his path. And they told him, you're going to take your, your airplane, but you're going to go in a certain place. But when you go there, you have to be corrupted. You have to be a Jacob. You know what I'm saying? You must be a Jacob. He said, no, I cannot do that. Then he arrived in the kingdom of heaven. When he arrived in the kingdom of heaven, he sleeps and they pay him. <laughs> Am I lying? Tell me when did you see that? You, you follow what I'm saying? He sleeps at home and they pay him salary. <laughs> Hallelujah. Auntie, auntie was tired to sleep. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because of the kingdom of heaven, he did not sleep in a tile room with another neighbor in a place in uh, Baltimore where he has all this like, weed that was passing on his nose. Because of the kingdom of heaven, he slept in climatizer. You know climatizer? Okay. Yeah. AC. Let me tell you something. What God is doing, you have to first recognize it in order to understand how you take your portion. See, there was a man. His name is Abenda. My wife called him Abendon. <laughs> she, she used to call him Abendon. I said, why do you think he's Abendon? He's not Abendon, he's Abanda. <laughs> Hallelujah. He came. There was a Sunday he could not come to church. Another Sunday he could not come to church. And a Sunday he came to church. And that Sunday was his birthday. He arrived in the kingdom of heaven. He returned with $500. Am I right? Because of him, people have $500, everybody. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I I'm not telling the truth. Yes. If, <laughs> but you see, between the kingdom of heaven and his house, there is a church over there. The lot of, this, of the, of the uh, something, what was it, whatever. The church of the latter saint did something like this. Ladder, ladder, they sent. He passed that church. <laughs> and I asked him one time, I said, well, you didn't go there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anyway, so God says, we, we're talking about the word of God. I don't know if you understand where I'm going. See, in real life, when you are connected to a right network, I'm talking about real life, in our daily life, when you are connected to a right network, and then there is somebody in that network who knows somebody. Something can happen for you. Am I lying? But listen. In the kingdom of heaven. When God gave the name for this place. It was not me who chose it. You see when I was trying to do. Uh, let me. Like wallet app. A company. I went through and I chose it. You feel what I'm saying? But when God wanted to build his own church, he instructed me which name to use. So for me, when I look through the law of God, 
for me to apply the element and the article of that law to the condition of the room of that kingdom, I know that it is not me doing so. I say, God, whatever promise you have said, it will come to pass. Now the question is whether you are willing to receive. It is free. You see, in some places, you have to give 1,000 seed first. How many thousand feet you gave? <laughs> Hallelujah. You have to give. You, you, you know, the, the guy tells you, if you give 1,000 seed, you're going to have a breakthrough. But the problem is that you don't even have one dollar seed. <laughs> you see, but what God does, he gives you. Oh, Jesus. Give me the verse again. Verse 3. Verse, verse 3. Mm -hmm, verse 3. And Jesus put forth his hand and mm -hmm. touched him, saying, uh -huh. I will be thou clean. Uh -huh. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Hallelujah. Immediately. And then what happened after verse 4? And Jesus said unto him, See thou tell no man, uh -huh. but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony. Hallelujah. That's what I was saying. God does not take from you offering for you to receive an offering. He restores you and he gives you money. And he said, go now, offer unto me. You get my point? But let me tell you something. When God gives to you, let me, let me break it down. You need to pay your bill, but you don't have money to pay bills. And then you pray that God will make a way. And then God makes a way. He gives you money. And you don't take that money to honor God. What you do, you pay only your bills. You know what happened? You ate the seed. You feel what I'm saying? Because if your mind tells you that, you see, I, I was in a difficult situation where I needed money to pay my bills. And God honor you. The first thing you have to do is like Abraham. He honored God. Because he knew that it was from God that it came. So he's not afraid to honor God. I you know what I'm saying? And remember, God established a rule of increase. In that rule of increase, you got to plant. Am I right? That rule of increase does not depend on your social status or who you are in the Lord. It depends on the principle that God has established. That's why an atheist plants and then he... Now, it says, I do not need you to bring me what you don't have. I want you to come and worship. And when you worship, I will tell you a word. And when I tell you that word, you will become a testimony. Hallelujah. You will not have to go to say, see what the Lord has done. No. People will ask you, what did the Lord has done in your life? Because they will see it. When God is going to bless you, that blessing ain't going to be secret. It will not be something hidden. Ask my brother, brother James. The car you have, you drive. Have you ever gone in a place where somebody say, oh, that's a, that, that's a pretty car. But in your garage, I say in your garage, in your, in your garage, garage, you have other cars. Some of them are hold, 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 right? When you take that one, you go to places, they tell you, ah, that's a pretty car. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them just make sure they don't pack next to you because when you open the door, you must scratch them. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is this, is that God blesses you even for your benefit. Hallelujah. So you enjoy. He's not against you enjoying it. That's why Jesus ate food. Hey, he didn't eat only ndole. He ate caviar too. <laughs> 
Hallelujah. He didn't eat gari only. Because the Bible said that when he was going in those places to eat, there were some of them who were rich. Hallelujah. Some of them were sorry. Even, if, even, even, even though some of them were the richest they have stolen. Amen. It's a case. Hallelujah. But still he went to eat there anyway. You know why? Because it says this. How we gather the riches of the wicked. Hallelujah. And put in your hand. Why? Because he wants you to become a kingdom. A, a wealth. Jesus. A wealth. A wealth. A manufacturer. A wealth. 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 A wealth. Hey, I am a blessing collector. <laughs> if you don't take it, I will take it. Now, let me tell you another thing and then we close. God, in his own wisdom, he told me, I want you to forsake all you do. Everything. And just do me. Meaning, do only thing which is the kingdom. No job, no business, no seeking wealth, no nothing. Just do the kingdom. So for me, it's God. He gave me the will to do that will. For the Bible says, he's the one who gives you the will to do the will of God. Amen. And when he did that, he removed every desire out of my heart. 2012, we started. 2022, 10 years after. I had sometimes an idea would pass in my mind. In less than three seconds, I will rebuke it because I say I do not want to disobey the word and the, uh, and the contract and the, and, the, and the covenant. The covenant. Sometimes people will beg me to just receive something for the work I have done for them, for the help I have done for them, and I say, alas, I cannot touch it. They say, we don't understand you. We just want to bless you for what you did. I say, if you wanted to bless me, you will bless me before I do it. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you give me, you're not blessing me, you're paying me for what I did. I ain't touching it. People could not understand. Ten years, day for day, I had no expectation whatsoever that I will ever, ever do anything that has to do with what we call business. No. Because I was about the business of my father. And suddenly, somebody says, Someone says, Suddenly. Somebody says, Suddenly. 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 See, don't believe what the devil tells you. That because you're serving the Lord with what you have, with who you are, you're going to be broke. That's a lie. That is a lie. God is not an acaparer. I would say that. A greedy. He is not greedy. For he says there is none that will live and forsake for my sake. Houses who will not receive in turn. 100%. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ten years after. Against all my expectations. Even my wildest dream, that I will not dare dream. He came in and said, now, I want you to manage wealth. And I thought, so we're going to build many churches or what? <laughs> Hallelujah. So Lord, what does it mean? And then he started talking to me. I want you to build. Build what? And then my wife also in that period of time, receive instruction. 
And I was in one time talking about uh, Brother Henry. And then he told me we went to see a lady. Um, what was that? And then he told me through the word of God. He said, you see, God has seen your faithfulness in the little things. Now he wants to establish you in the bigger things. And another time I went to see that, the, the whole mummy, 90, 90, what's her name? Alice. And we were there with my wife and the children. When they were doing something with uh, the feast of the trumpet, something, something like this. We went in that church. And a group of three or four people that were prophets, they came to me and they started praying and they started speaking the same word. God has seen your faithfulness in the small things. Now he's establishing you over the bigger things. I said, but I already heard that word. Are you know what I'm saying? Now things start not compiling. And suddenly, I said, suddenly, somebody sends me an email. I almost put that in the trash. Because I did not understand. And suddenly, before I realized, God just been opening door. Poof, 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 poof. And today, in the kingdom of heaven, we will manufacture wealth. I, I, you know what I'm saying? He hasn't been with any toiling. Somebody told me, have you done a market research before to launch? I said, no, God did it, and then he launched me. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Because I haven't done nothing. I haven't called no one. I haven't introduced my not nowhere. All I did, he told me, I want you to find where this great company that does trillions of dollars, I want you to find where they build the stuff. And I'm thinking, where, where am I gonna <laughs> where am I gonna find it? But you see, that was misconic. I said misconic. Hey, <laughs> you know misconic, that's another word for dictionary. <laughs> Hallelujah. That was a misconception, misconception of God. By the time he told me to search for it, he already gave the answer where he was. When God tells you to do something, you think that you're starting. No, you're only fulfilling it. Because he has started before you began. Let me read again. When God tells you to do something, you in your mind, you think that you are starting that thing. No. He finished it and came, he said, just fulfill it. So it means you cannot go wrong. You cannot go broke. You cannot fail. Why? Because he... he somebody, some, somebody says suddenly. Suddenly. If you, if you understand the rule of that law into the courtroom that the Lord is speaking unto us today, you will come out with a case approved. Before you start, God went in the future. He finished the case. He finished the work. He done it all. That's why he said, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Because he did it all. He said he was finished at the cross. So you are not starting a new. You are fulfilling the promise. Somebody say, I'm fulfilling the promise. I'm fulfilling the promise. You will get out of one state to another. That's the beginning of your establishment. He will get you into an Abrahamic land, a land of riches. And then he will speak Isaac in your life. And 
it will preserve you from all the Jacobs around you. And you will find yourself in the kingdom of heaven to build his kingdom. There is no coincidence. There is God's incidence. Causing those things to happen even if they were not, but they are happening. Now, he asking you how much you want to receive. The answer must be overflow. Hallelujah. Abundant overflow. Run me over. Hit me like a train with a blessing. Let it be bombarding me. Let that blessing just uh, get me out. Uh, like a rocket. Rise me up. Slap me with your blessings. Let me sleep in. Let me walk in. Let me dance in. Let me move in. For it is you who establish. It is your word who establish. It is your hand who establish. For you are stronger than my enemies. You are stronger than my foes. You are stronger than those who are. You are the one who gives. You are the one who gives. I bless your name. I bless your name. For you called me out from the darkness and you brought me in your marvelous light. I saw Hey! You have done it again. Hey, you have done it again. Oh, you have done it again. Jehovah, you have done it again. Hallelujah. God of all things, the God of heaven has spoken. I will make you wealth manufacturer. He has started using your hands, your feet, your mind, your heart, shaping you into a destiny that he has written. And in that destiny that he has written, he made it be according to the perfect will of his own heart. And he is the one who calls you to start. He is the one who is causing you to finish. For he is the altar and the finisher of faith. And the good work he has started in you, through you, with you, by you and for you, he will bring it to completion. He saw you from afar when you were still under the fig tree. You were in a position where you could not be appreciated. You were in a position you could not be understood. You were in a position you could not even understand yourself. But when it took you in, he cleaned you up. He removed the filthiness out of your life. And he placed in you the desire to seek him. This is the work of God. And out of that desire, he's planting in you desire to do things, desire to rise, desire to establish, desire to start, desire to fulfill, desire to keep on pressing, desire to see it happening, desire to let it be, desire to be overflowed, desire to be overtaken. Ah, Jesus, suddenly, seven times the blessings come your way because God says, I want to establish you so you build my kingdom 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 I have taken you from the east I have taken you from the west I have taken you from the south I have taken you 
from the north have brought you in the land of Abraham to get you connected in my work so you be established to the glory of God you become a testimony and go and show thyself as a testimony and offer unto God the offering that is due to his kingdom but it is him and none else who saw you and said ha ah, Yam, willing, be thou established. Go and prosper. Go and fulfill it. Go and see the goodness of the Lord. The blessings of the Lord follow you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. Amen.